Psalm 28. Uh, the book of Psalms is in the middle of the Bible, and the 28th chapter, of course, near the beginning of the book. We're going to, in just a moment, read this psalm together. Uh, but before we do, I'd like to offer just a few thoughts about Psalm 28, which hopefully will guide our reading and uh, our understanding of this part of the precious Word of God. Sometimes we talk about worst-case scenarios, and uh, you're in a situation, you say, well, and the worst-case scenario would be, and then, then we, we, we list something. But I wonder if you've noticed that often those examples aren't really the worst-case scenarios. There might be something bad that might happen, but it's really not the worst-case scenario. In Psalm 28, in the midst of a crisis, David alludes to worst-case scenarios. And I think he highlights two. The first worst-case scenario is that God would not hear him when he cried out for help. He says, To you I will cry, O Lord my rock, do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me I become like those who go down to the pit. To David, that's a terrible prospect to think that he would cry out and God wouldn't hear him. Reminds me of that scene in Fiddler on the Roof where one of the daughters of Tevye, the main character, is, is crying out to her father, Papa, Papa! And he ignores her cries and turns a cold face to his daughter and, and walks on. It's a terrifying prospect. And to David, this seemed like a nightmare, that he would cry out and God wouldn't listen. The second worst case scenario I think that he alludes to here is that God would take him away with the wicked uh, and with the works of iniquity. Verse 3, do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity. David's other worst case scenario is that God would treat him as his sins deserved, as he treats the heathen. Now, those, those, are, those are frightening prospects, aren't they? That God wouldn't hear, that God would treat us like a wicked person. But expectedly, David reflects on these worst-case scenarios not with unbelieving dread, but with childlike optimism. Notice later in the psalm, in verse 6, he says, He has heard the voice of my supplications. In other words, he's not turned a deaf ear to my cries. And in verse 8, he, uh, let me see, verse 8, uh, he is the saving refuge of his anointed. He's not cast me away with the unbelievers. He's the saving refuge of, the, of, the, uh, of his anointed. And friends, I mention these things because believers can have this same optimism when we face worst-case scenarios. We, we too can face worst-case scenarios not with unbelieving dread, but with childlike optimism. And we can do so because of the work of Jesus Christ, because of his anointed, which he references in verse 8. And here's why. Because in, uh, because in Christ... The worst case scenarios that David alludes to here became reality. For a time, God the Father was silent to the cries of his Son. And we hear Christ echo those words from Psalm 22, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And for a time, there's no answer. And Christ did go down to the pit. David says, do not take me away with the wicked. But for Christ, that became a reality. He descended into hell, meaning that he took upon himself all of the agonies and torments of, God's, of the hell of God's wrath against sinners. God treated Christ 
according to our deeds. He treated Christ according to the wickedness of our endeavors, as verse 4 says. And so, because of that, believers, those who cleave to Christ, can say in the concluding verses of the psalm, the Lord is my strength. He is the saving refuge of His anointed. Save your people, bless your inheritance, shepherd them also, and bear them up 